You mentioned Van Halen and Kiss. What about yeah. the relation between Van Halen and Kiss? It, well, it, you know, Gene Simmons discovered Van Halen. Right. And he designed the logo for them, which was absurdly ridiculous. I was like an insect with, with platform <laughs> shoes, and he wanted to call the band Daddy Long Legs. <laughs> he has no street sense, and it's not his fault because he came from Israel and – he told me he learned how to speak English for the most part, reading comic books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I love Gene. Me and Gene used to room together. And I remember the last time I, I text, I sent him an email. Do you remember when they were playing down in Ecuador or something and he collapsed on stage? Yeah. 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 I immediately sent him an email and he got back to me within five or 10 minutes and said, Ace, I was dehydrated. We're playing a concert in the jungle at 106 degrees, high humidity. Right. I didn't hydrate myself enough. I said, oh, great. I'm glad you're okay. You know, mm. because, you know, me and Gina are like, you know. Yeah, good friends. Yeah. So yeah. talk about, so Gene discovered Van Halen with the daddy long legs. Yeah. Oh, that I was didn't always, finish the story. I always yeah. go off on tangents. <laughs> That's right. They're all we good stories. discovered that and... Uh, I said to him, he showed it to me, and I said, I'm not so sure about this. And then uh, I guess uh, when he showed it to uh, Eddie and his brother, what's Alex, his brother's name? Alex and Dave and Mike, the band. No, uh, Eddie Alex. And his Alex Van Halen. Oh, Alex. Yeah, he showed it to those guys because I think those guys pretty much make the decisions, right? Yeah, certainly. So to make a long story short, I think they kind of strayed away from Gene and realized he really wasn't uh, on the same page as they were. And uh, but you know we befriended them. They came. They showed up at a couple of our rehearsals. I mean, I'll never forget saying to Paul, "Who are these fucking idiots here?" You know? <laughs> yeah, but one of the cool. So one of the coolest <laughs> stories he told me. Yeah, who are these idiots? But he told me about the time when they came. You know, when they came to New York City, when Gene flew them up and they were doing the showcase for Bill of Coin and the, these guys were rehearsing at SIR. Remember, they were rehearsing and Van Halen came and they did their audition on Kiss's gear. Oh, wow. I remember what you told me when you and Paul were standing there. I don't even remember. But you told me, you like, you got to get these guys off stage. They're too fucking good. You know, <laughs> you remember seeing what he told me when he wow. saw Eddie play. Ed is an amazing guitarist. I mean, I can't even attempt to do some of the solos he do he does. Mm -hmm. it's amazing. But I will say, when it comes to the tapping part, he was in the pit at Madison Square Garden watching me tap during my guitar solo, and I used the guitar pick instead of a finger. But he took it to a whole nother level. I mean... Yeah, some of his solos are going to go down in history as some of the greatest guitar solos ever in rock and roll. That's for sure. As as if they haven't already. <laughs> Just uh, like I mean. some of Aces, man. You know, again, but uh, that was one of the cool stories. That was at the L.A. Forum. I remember him. I remember Ed actually telling me that story when they went when they were backstage and they were hanging out with you, drinking your beers and shit and probably doing other things with you. And that was the funny story. I think what when, other thing? what, what, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what were you guys, what are the things would a band like Kiss and Van Halen be doing backstage uh, in the seventies? It was the happy powder. Yeah. Peruvian mushroom <laughs> powder, the highest grade. But that, I think that was a funny story because I remember didn't, uh, didn't they put um, Gene, I think put, Eddie and Alex on a separate guest list and Dave went down to go to get his tickets and his name wasn't on the guest list or something. I think he told that story in his book, but you know. Ace, were you, were you a big Hendrix guy? Cause there's a lot of Hendrix in your, in your playing. Was I a big Hendrix fan? When I was 16, I would walk around high school with the Are You Experienced album under my arm. I had to have it with me so I could stare at the picture and I love the black and white shot on the back, and it's backlit so you can see the three afros. I mean, <laughs> it's genius. And then in 1990, uh, I'm sorry, uh, when I was uh, in the 1970, uh, there was a peace concert on Randall's Island. I don't know if you know where that is. I don't. It's 
between Queens and Manhattan. Okay. A small island. Yeah. And they had a, a, a lot of huge big names performing. Mountain, Steppenwolf. Uh, I can't remember all the names, but they were p bands in that category. And of course, Hendrix was performing. Anyway, I was I had hair down to here. I had a black T-shirt on with a snakeskin star. My mom had sewed on. I was wearing <laughs> lemon yellow hot pants and Vans. And I was watching the bands that had performed coming out to watch some of the other bands that were going to perform. And, the, you know, in those days, nobody had laminates or stick-ons. Mm. I just walked backstage and I looked at the guy and he looked at me assuming I'm a rock star because I did look like one. And I just said, and he let me walk in backstage. So I'm sitting there talking to John Kay and a couple of the other bands that were there, uh, there hanging out. And uh, after about 20 minutes, people started going, oh, who is this fucking guy? And <laughs> finally, you know, the, uh, the stage director and, uh, the producer of the concert came up to me and said, who the fuck are you? I go, I'm nobody. I just snuck backstage. He goes, well, let me ask you a question. Can, can you do anything? I go, I can change strings. I can tune guitars. I can set up drums. I can set up amps. He goes, you know, we're a little short, you know, on personnel because it was a free peace concert. So within five minutes, I'm setting up Mitch Mitchell's drum. <laughs> from the Jimi Hendrix experience. And Hendrix was one. I idolized Hendrix like you wouldn't believe. Because nobody, even even from to this day, nobody plays like Hendrix did. Right. Yeah, he, he used to string a strap backwards because he played lefty. And he, and he was just, uh, there, there will be no one ever to play like Hendrix. He Did was you a wonderful guy musician. Anyway, I'm setting up Mitch Mitchell's drums. Do you remember the time when, uh, uh, what's the drummer's name? Mitch, Mitch Mitchell. Mitchell? Yeah. yeah. You just said it. Duh. <laughs> remember when Mitch Mitchell dropped the Afro look and yeah. tail, grew it long and wore a headband? Yeah. Well, that had just happened, and I wasn't aware of that look. So I'm setting up the drums with an English roadie and this other guy comes over and I didn't think it was Mitch Mitchell because I didn't recognize the image. And uh, the drum roadie says to the other guy, the guy that I didn't know who it was, he goes, hey, Mitch, which snare drum are you going to use tonight? And then I just froze. I go, I can't believe it. Here I am setting up Mitch Mitchell's drums with Mitch Mitchell and an uh, English guitar roadie. And uh, I was like frozen. I, I couldn't talk to them, but uh, I was helping them finish setting up the drums. You know, then after the show, you know, I, Hendrix gave me a high five, <laughs> helping out. And uh, eventually I stayed to the very end and I had no car or transportation to get home. And this is my luck. I put my hand out. And the car leaving stopped and said, where are you going? I go, I go, I'm going to the Bronx around 200th Street. They go, oh, we're going five minutes away from there. Jump in. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Oh, it's the best. <laughs>